Hi friends, it's Carrie from Stretch Chi. I wanted to talk to you today about Kihara. What is Kihara? Well, Kihara is the method that we do at Stretch Chi, the method of stretching. It's kind of amazing, but you guys already know that because you've been doing some of the stretches, I hope. What I want to really talk about today is actually what is Kihara? What is this word? Ki Hara. Kihara, resistance stretching technique. These are translated Japanese words. This ki, ki means your life force. Your vital life force is the energy that runs through your body. It's sort of like chi, like a stretch chi, that's where um, the stretch chi name comes from, is stretch and chi, your life force. Um, prana is also the same thing, it could be like the electricity in your body. Um, it's just your basic life force. It's like the energy constantly running in your body. And then what is your hara? It's abdomen. Did I spell that right? It's basically your abdomen, which is a simplified thing, really, because really it's everything from your sternum down to the bottom of your pelvis, right by your pubic bone, and surrounding on either side. In Japanese martial arts, it would be called your tanden. And this is basically the area of our body where we hold all of this life force, where it's generated, we want it to be there, we want all of this strength in the tendon, it's right here in your hara. You could also consider it your center of gravity. So, he means your life force in your center of gravity, your life force in your core, the force of your core being. So you can look at this in a lot of different ways. In resistance stretching, we tend to think more about Kihara as your life force in a physical realm. For instance, if you were doing sports, martial arts, um, or just any everyday life, if someone were to come up to me and like push me, could I get off of my balance and return back to balance. Basically, the force of my core strength has the ability to get me off balance and pull me right back up. We call that dynamic stability. Knowing that, that we have this life force in our body and that this life force is centered in our core, then we have to figure out like what actually, what makes your core strong? What makes you stable? Well, this comes into more of this uh, kind of Eastern mindset. I'm not very good at drawing circles. So, you know, <laughs> it's a little better. There's this thing in Eastern philosophy called the Tai Chi. Now the Tai Chi is made up of two parts, separated by something here in the middle, and it has two little dots in here. Now basically, everything in the world has a plus and a minus. We live in this world of duality. So we have the sky and the earth. We have hot and cold. We have the sun and the moon. We have morning and evening. We have spring and fall. We have summer and winter. We have the hard part of the carrot and the leafy part of the carrot. There are so many different dualities. So we have a negative duality, which is something that's receptive, and that's called yin. Yin is typically thought of as being the feminine polarity, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a woman or a man, although it could have that connotation, but it is like the negative side of the battery. So for instance, like winter, is yin, it's more receptive. Introversion is yin, because instead of being like, hey world, here I am, an introvert is more like, I'm gonna sit here and read my book and wait for you to talk to me. Um, but another part of yin would be the leafy greens, when we're talking about food. 
But in your body, yin are the receptive muscles, and those are the things that would catch. So like your pecs, right? You could do like a push up, but really like you use your pecs to give someone a hug, to like pull something closer to you, to pull, right? Um, those are your yin muscles. Anything that would curl you up into a ball, that's yin. So these are your inside muscles. And these all go into this yin category. On the other side, we have yang. And yang tends to be the positive polarity, that's the push polarity. So these are muscles that would take you away from the center of your body, like your hamstrings take off running, or like your quads, if you were to like come out, out of a squat, the, um, the back of your shoulders, like, hey, get away from me, right? That's all the yang muscle groups. So these are your back outside muscles. The other side of the equation would be like from winter, summer. Summer is yang, extroversion. I want to run a crease here. Extroversion is yang. Um, the carrot, potatoes, chickens, they're very yang, they're very compact. The chicken, super compact. So when you see the tai chi, which is this sucker, this whole section is dark, except for a little bit here, which is yin, because everything in its extreme eventually becomes its opposite, and it's this constant circling. So we end up with a little bit of yin here. And basically what that tells us is that if you curl up into a ball too much, Eventually, everything in its extreme becomes its opposite, and you're going to start to push out of the ball because you can't do it anymore. Or like, if you receive too much money, you're eventually going to have to turn around and give something back, right? Or vice versa. If you um, are like giving too much, then eventually you have to receive something, right? This is the the basic like. The basic idea of finding balance and harmony in nature. This is central to Eastern philosophy, but kind of a beautiful philosophy in all places. Anyway, now the cool part about the Tai Chi that nobody really talks about is where all the energy is. So um, I was studying macrobiotic diets, and macrobiotic diets are basically the science of eating according to the Tai Chi. So like, for instance, having a balance between leafy greens and the carrot. There's the carrot. And they say that the most energy in the carrot is the part that we throw away. It's the part where the greens meet the root, like where, you know, where the, the top of the carrot that everybody cuts off and throws away. But actually, if you put that in your soup, and if you, if you lived in a place where a lot of people were eating macrobiotics, then if you got that part of the carrot, it's considered good luck. It's like the best part of the carrot. Someone explained it to me once as like, it's where the carrot's having sex. I think it's hilarious, but it's basically like the part where the yin and the yang are meeting together. So that's where the most energy is. This is the most important thing. This line here, this line of the Taiji, where yin and yang are pulled together, the force of attraction between the two, the gravity between the two, is where all the energy is. And that's what your hara is in your body. So, if your inside muscles are too strong, and they're pulling you in, and your back muscles are not able to hold you up, then the balance is wrong, and your hara is not strong, your core is not strong. If you can find balance on the inside muscles and the back muscles, instead of being here, you find yourself here, and your core is naturally strong. And you never have to do a sit-up or a plank ever again. I'm kidding, I don't know. You probably could, but maybe you don't have to. I can tell you right now, people try to push me over sometimes and they can't do it, and I cannot tell you the last time I intentionally did a sit-up. Kind of amazing, right? Ding, ding, ding. All strong, all through that core, right? And all that is, is being balanced in my hara because the front and the back 
or the inside and the outside or the top and the bottom is all in balance. When everything's in balance, there is no reason for your hara to be out of balance. And that's the principle of Kihara. Have a good day, you guys. I'll see you on Monday for leg day. Bye-bye.